all those and he'll meet a lot to Ken. It's Ken Van Lu. You can tag him. Tag me. I'll tag all of you. And uh, wow. Well, back today on the Michael D Show for a second visit is Ken Van Lu, real estate mogul from New Jersey, New York area. You build skyscrapers. It's happening, buddy. Good to see you. Good again. to see you again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we met, you were actually leading a real estate conference in Tampa. I was speaking at another conference. We ended up having breakfast together. Yes. And you said, I built skyscrapers and, and need to write a book. And since you are the overachiever, you've got three new books in addition to your original book. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, I tell you, you just spoke to our group here about quitting and why quitting is so important. What are a couple things you've been able to quit that have propelled your life forward faster? Yeah. You know, I finally started to realize that you turn into the five people you hang out with, you know, so I had to change a lot of people, places and things, I guess, you know. Yeah. Um, but really, I, I think my toughest challenge was, you know, not believing in myself. You mm. know, even after building several skyscrapers, you know, I would hear people go, Ken, you, you built skyscrapers, like, wake <laughs> up, you know, and um for some reason, I, I don't know why, but when, when we white knuckle things in mm -hmm. life and succeed, we don't necessarily validate ourselves and acknowledge our achievements. Yes. Well, I, I think that's a great way to put it. And uh, I know there's a lot of young men and young women that look up to you in the real estate space that you've mentored and through your programs and things. I want to get into that in a little bit. But you just spoke to our group here and it was it was just so impactful. You used the elevator metaphor. I, I want you to tell us since you're in, in construction and real estate, what's that all about? Yeah, you know, it's funny because after building so many buildings, you know, you, you learn how to build an elevator. You don't think about it as you as we ride up in the yeah, elevator. Yeah, but there's exactly. a lot involved, you know, and you know, one day I just created this analogy, you know, after doing this thing, 137,000 hours that it was really building this extraordinary life. And it's been an elevator ride, you know, it's, yeah. it, you know, I was told you're going to lose it twice and you're going to make all your money between 55 and 60. And that's kind of what happened, you know? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Is that a journey you would take again or recommend to your closest <laughs> friends? You know, I, I think, you know, if you're not, if you're not born with a silver spoon, you mm -hmm. know, I think you need to build some character and yeah. it no normally takes about two failures <laughs> yeah you, you know to get that <laughs> <laughs> well i tell you what you've got your uh, your third and fourth book coming out you've got your number two book coming out dirt and i, ju I just want to read these subtitles work hard play harder buy dirt <laughs> uh, inspired by your yeah. love for building yeah and quitter is kind of a concept where you walk onto a stage like you just did with our group and we're thought you're applauding us for being quitters. That's a good thing. <laughs> and uh, change your thinking, change your life. Yes, yes. And as, as I've watched you over the years, the last couple of years, you've been a mentor to so many people. Do you find yourself, because I know you're a very, you said 137,000 hours. You yeah. know exactly how many hours you've been on the job. Yeah, you know, it's funny because. How many of you can say that with your job? You know how many hours you, yeah. this gentleman can. Yeah. And, and that all came about as if you, I heard you say it yesterday, right? In order to become a master at anything, you have to have 10,000 hours. Right. And I heard it from a magician, yeah. you know, who practiced cards for 10,000 hours. Right. Then I heard it from Robert Greene in Mastery. And then I heard it in Outliers. Yeah. And I think it was in one of my funky situations in 2008 when I didn't want to do real estate anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I was like, how many hours do I have in this thing? You know, and I... 137,000 hours in construction, engineering, and real estate. And I was like, you know, you could do that in your sleep. I think you better get back into real estate. So mm. instead of buying Stuart's root beer and taking <laughs> root beer to China and uh, a, a car Simonizing where I was doing testing in NASA, <laughs> you know, I got back into real estate, you know, yeah. and then put the educational platform. But, you know, I do real estate every day and I don't do it once and then try to sell it. <laughs> Well, that, that's a beautiful thing. And I think uh, the fact that you've got all this education, you know, we said that content creation plus syndication yeah. equals monetization. And you're taking what you're best at. You put it into these programs. Tell us a little bit about these programs. How do people find them? Yeah, you know, I, it all started standing on top of that skyscraper <laughs> where I said uh, top down thinking, you uh -huh. know, create massive confusion. And, and frustration and you'll have massive breakthroughs and you'll learn a heck of a lot more, you know? So, you know, I, I built um, eight figure deals with no money down, okay. which turned into the real estate development made simple course, but it's the zenith of real estate. 
and reverse engineered it from there. So okay. from that came the modern wealth building formula, which is where we did our $17 million assisted living, 72,000 square feet, 113 beds in 13 months. Oh my goodness. Didn't know what I was doing when I did it, Wow! but I wrote about it and the modern wealth building formula shows you how we did that. Wow. Then we put a whole program around that. So someone could actually have the theoretical training and then they get me to be a pain in the neck a few times a month to hold them accountable. Wow. And then from there, we created a financial freedom protocol because everybody knew me as the commercial guy. They didn't know that I had done 137 residential deals in one year. Okay. Then we created a financial it's not freedom a bad protocol. Year, right? Yeah, wow. it was a pretty good year. <laughs> and then next year, we're going to create Real Estate Master University, which yeah. will give the full gamut of real estate right. because in 2008, when I lost $300 million in one day, when Lehman crashed, oh my gosh. I was like, I'm going to create a real estate one-stop shop that for people that want to learn real estate, they don't have to go anywhere else. And you teach people how to find property, how to fix and flip, how to syndicate, how to invest. Uh, it's actually find, fund, and facilitate. Find, fund, and facilitate. And, and what we've done is we created a, the Global Freedom Fund because mm. my real passion is helping passive investors that mm -hmm. really don't want to touch real estate, mm -hmm. just give you your money, take care of it, pay them a return. Mm -hmm. And then we have you know active investors that want to get their hands dirty, dive in. So you know, they want to get their hands in the dirt right they there. They get their yeah, hands yeah. in the dirt. You know, so we give an opportunity for active and passive investors uh -huh. to learn more about us, and, and we serve their needs, you know, depending yeah. on what side of the fence they are. I want to be passive. I don't want to do the day-to-day. -day. <laughs> I don't want to go collect rent or anything like that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. yeah you so don't have to manage the I want to leap into my 60s, there and uh, I want to live the life of my dream. So I, this book really fires you up. But why, does. Why, why does leap seem to well, – you, you seem you light – you kind of light up. I'll, I'll tell you why, because – you know, in uh, September 11th, I was with Tony Robbins mm -hmm. in Hawaii, and I was 246 pounds. I had a little bit of hair on my head then, but I shaved my head that day um, after the World Trade Center collapsed. Uh, my best friend worked for Cantor Fitzgerald. I knew he was gone. And uh, I said, you know, it's time to do some things and, and change my life. So that next day, I climbed a 50-foot telephone pole and stood on top. Jumped off, missed a trapeze, but oh. thank God I was tied to the rope. Following day, uh, worked, walked on 45 feet of fire. And the next day, I met Stu Middleman, who ran from New York to California, two and a half marathons a day for 57 days, and he taught me how to run. Yeah. And I came home from Hawaii, and I started running, and I wrote down 188, 34-inch waist on May 1st. And uh, I hit it. And... Uh, this year, I figured out how to get to 170. I hit 60. How I'm in tall the best are you? shape of my life. I'm about, I'm shrinking. <laughs> I think I'm 5'9 now or whatever, but, uh, you know. Wow. And you got but, those yellow running shoes that you wear when you yeah, run? Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm following wow. my footsteps. But, yeah, that's how it all started, you know. Just wow. um, this life has been extraordinary. I married my three children. Yeah. In one year. Yes. And uh, still married to the same wife. Still married years. to her. <laughs> so She's amazing. Life is pretty good. Wow. So, so, I mean, on this stage of your life now, I mean, you said you love to speak, you love to go on shows and be interviewed. Uh, are there masterminds and, and coaching programs like for the people that really want you? Because people can sign up for your programs, yeah. get all the content, go out there and do the real estate. But let's say they want to hang out with Ken for a week. Yeah. Are you building those out? Or are you yeah, you know, I actually keep it really simple. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going in that direction where uh -huh. I'm going to sell, sell, sell. I just uh -huh. have one thing to give an opportunity for people to buy and invest in themselves. Uh -huh. And that's the Global Real Estate Investment Enterprise, yeah. which is a lifetime program. Mm -hmm. And I tease people and I tell them, you know, it's like the real estate mafia. Once you get in, you can't get out. You can't, you, you probably don't want to get out, right? You don't right? want to get out, yeah. but you know, yeah. I, I make sure you're successful. Yes. And you know, it's not about upselling you to the next mastermind, okay. or upselling you to the next course. I just give it to you all. And I figure it, it's like that puzzle that you put on your table at Christmas that sits there for like six months and you're trying to put it, put it together. Yeah. I help you put it together. Oh, you help you. That's, that's awesome. Can you give us an idea on rate of return or is that something yeah, you're talking yeah, about? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I find that uh, the value I give is 10x right off the bat. Um, I show you how to write it off, essentially, okay. so you get it, you know, you immediately start to get an infinity return. Okay. And uh, from there, you know, I have lawyers that since November have bought six properties with no money down. I have 24-year-olds that are buying their second buy and holds. So that's what's happening okay. in the group, you know, and it, yeah. it's an ecosystem that we uh -huh. call. 
you know, because you're there with 75 professionals. So if you need architecture, you need engineering, the way I found jobs is you call people, find out what's on the board and get ahead in front uh, of everybody. Get, get out there where the need is. Yeah. Now you've been kind of a master of operationally putting everything together. You got lead gen funnels, you're speaking, you're here at this event, creating the assets. Yeah. What do you see us doing as we move forward to launch your book, press releases going yeah. out, media going out and speaking going out? How do you see yourself really we're us working with you, leveraging those opportunities. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think an important thing is learning what you don't know. <laughs> and I don't know what you do. Yeah. And I'm going to stay in my lane and follow yeah. direction. But I, I, you know, I've been exposed to something that I never even imagined. Yeah. You know, when we first met, uh -huh. I, I said, I just tortured myself for one year writing a book. I'm not ready yet. You know, <laughs> Yeah, you were still in recovery. Yeah, I was still in recovery. <laughs> you, you know, but now I look at it and, and you know, I, I came here with no expectations uh -huh. and then they don't get unfulfilled. But, yeah. you know, what's opened up in front of me is, is the sky's the limit, you know, similar to building another skyscraper. You yeah. Know? So, you know, this whole TV and media is something that I never thought about. I do like getting on stage. Well, well you're very comfortable with it. You talked about going to the Javits Center. I've spent a lot of time at the Javits Center yeah. at the Book Expo America yeah. and featuring celebrities down there and launching books and doing, doing red carpets down there with clients. Yeah. But uh, you did something at the Javits Center and you, you started something, a, a separate chapter of your life. Do you want to share a little something with uh, yeah, us here? I, I would love to do that. So in 2008, I was partners with Lehman Brothers. And we had a, a whole city block on 6th Avenue. We bought St. Vincent's Hospital, and we were doing the toy building, the triangular building downtown. And uh, I dropped to my knees when hearing the news that Lehman Brothers went bankrupt um, because I, they were holding a $300 million loan of ours. So the phones went blank, and I didn't have a job the next day. So um, I went down to Florida, played some golf, cried in my mother's arms. <laughs> And, uh, and figured out what I was going to do. <laughs> and uh, the only thing I knew was magic. And uh, I had opened up one of my magic magazines, and I saw this ad about doing trade show magic, and this guy, Joel Bauer. So I fly to California, I meet Joel Bauer. And I was a great magician, but I had to learn the trade show business. So a couple weeks later, I crash Jacob Javits Center. I'm doing a trade show. Uh, Newspaper shows up, Real Estate Weekly's talking about this adrenaline junkie doing magic at the Jacob Javits Center, but I didn't have any money at that point. You are an adrenaline <laughs> junkie. I was an adrenaline junkie. You still are. And, um, you know, from there, we got friendly, and Joel said, come see what I really do. And that's when I saw my first platform close. He says, I'm the best in the world. He is. For a day, he gave value, and then he made 40 people stand up and write a check for 12 grand. And I was like, wow, he just made a half a million dollars in one day. I was like, Joel, can you teach me that? He was like, yeah, well, what have you done? And, and I had done an eight-figure deal with no money down. He's like, get in a hotel room, record it, and you'll have a course, eight-figure deals with no money down. And that's exactly what I did, and that was in 2008. People that were in my seminar that day are still with me today, and wow. um, you know, I get to pay it forward now. That, that's a big testament, too, because right, building the online community is yeah. the apex of building the movement. It's one thing to write a book. It's one thing to do a keynote. It's one thing to have an event. But when you can create a movement where you have membership that stays with you like yeah. that and they don't opt out, it shows you that you're providing value, you're mm. creating community. That's what we're trying to do here. Yeah, and absolutely. so we're really grateful you're part of this community. Well, we you. want to have you be a mentor, a coach, and a, a give back partner because mm. I look at these young entrepreneurs, they're, they're wanting to be the next Tony Robbins or the yeah. next Susie Orman. Yes. And they, they uh, you know, they're going to fall on their face some, but they need somebody like you that can speak in their life mm. and share their story. Yeah. And uh, they need quitter and they need leap yes no and they need derp they need the trill they need the trilogy <laughs> they need the trilogy we're gonna bundle the trilogy <laughs> you want me to hold that while you share a trick or how do we want to do it <laughs> y'all want to see magic trick <laughs> he's put me on the spot here. yeah yeah um, i'll just hold this what you need here i'm not sure if i can even uh, do it what do you see, what do you I, need i think you know I, I i don't know if you see that but this studio is pretty magical you know if you look close it is it's the beyond the studio. The dust has silver, you know, but it's hard to see. You have to hold it up to the light. You see, now if you if you put the coin in your hand, it'll actually it'll actually change the silver. It's pretty cool. Now that reaction happens right in front of your eyes with a little rub. It goes from silver to dust back to silver again. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> On the Michael D. Show, we're gonna Thank have you to very have much. him back. Real estate tycoon, author, speaker.
and magician <laughs> and mentor. So thank you, I got to tell you, you're a lot of fun. We, we're definitely going to have you back and come hang out with us tonight. We're not having fried ravioli, my friend. That's okay. <laughs> you're awesome. Thank you very much. You're awesome. All right. I'll do one of these. <laughs>